okay so let's start definite integrals definite integrals a very interesting chapter almost uh, 70 to 80 percent of the question which is related to integration asked in competitive exams are based on definite integrals because of course the options are plain and simple so as the name itself suggests definite integral that means the answer is a definite quantity okay now first of all we need to understand the first uh, formula that we are going to talk about is basically the fundamental principle or fundamental theorem of integral calculus calculus which says that if you have a function whose derivative is f of x okay so as to say that integral of f of x is capital f of x plus c okay remember capital f is called the primitive or antiderivative whereas small x is called the derivative so the fundamental theorem of integral calculus says this result is going to be f of b minus f of a and since this is a very definite result it's a numeric value that's why such kind of integrals are called definite integrals okay uh, quickly talking about the geometric interpretation when i say i am integrating f of x from a to b okay and let's say this is my graph of the function and i am integrating from a to b so if this is your function f of x and i am integrating it from a to b it actually gives you the algebraic area between the function and the x axis what do i mean by algebraic area that means let's say this area which is above the x axis this is called a positive area now the question will arise in your mind why do we call this area as positive area very simple if you look at the expression you are actually integrating this correct so at a distance x if you choose a very thin rectangular strip of dx so if you uh, choose at a distance of x a very thin rectangular strip of the thickness dx okay of course the height of this will be f of x itself then f of x basically represents the height d of x represents the width okay so this gives you the differential area or the infinitesimally small area of the strip okay when you integrate this basically you are adding all these small areas now remember since height and width both are positive here now height is positive i can see because you are measuring in the positive direction up how do you know width is positive how do you know width is positive here so we are going from left to right yes if you are going from left to right means your x is increasing if your x is increasing dx will be positive right dx is positive means x is increasing okay so in this way the entire area that comes out in this part let's say i call this part as c over here from a to c the area is a positive area whereas when you find this area okay here f of x itself sorry this is from c okay but if you find the area from c to b your f of x is a negative quantity because the height here is negative okay so this becomes a negative quantity while this is still positive okay thereby giving you a negative answer over here so this entire thing is positive whereas this entire thing is negative so this area comes out to be negative so integral of the function from a to b gives you the algebraic sum of the of the area between the function and the x axis okay many people say it gives you the area under that curve that is not completely correct actually okay it doesn't give you the area but however it helps you to find the area in order to find the area you have to cleverly choose your points you have to cleverly choose your signs of that particular part of the curve okay now <clears throat> when you look at this formula it actually reminds you of the fact that you first have to find out the primitive through anti derivative or use of indefinite integrals and then put the limits of integration like this okay 
remember all the methods that you have learned for finding indefinite integrals will work fine over here correct your method of substitution etc everything will work integration by parts that is also going to be working in this case so what i'm going to do is before i introduce you to uh, further parts of definite integrals which is basically a property driven topic this is a property driven topic okay i'm going to ask you few questions just on the basis of how much you understand when you say integration of f of x from a to b is f of b minus f of a okay so i'll i'll begin with a question okay let me start with this question this is a very strange question it says evaluate this directly as well as by substitution of x is equal to 1 by t and examine as to why the results do not tally okay if you look at this question would you all like to try it first yes sir yeah sir can we answer yes yes uh, sir uh, because when we substitute x equal to 1 by t the limits also change from minus 1 by 2 and 1 by 2 and when we solve the integral we get uh, uh, for t uh, for t we get uh, the integral as uh, half tan inverse 2t and for x we get uh, Two times tan inverse of x by two. So when you sub and since the limits are different for both, uh, we'll get a different answer. Um, limit. If it is different, it doesn't mean the answer would be different. So when you substitute x as one by t, or uh, x goes from minus two to two, but uh, when you do that, t will also have to become zero at one point, which can't happen. So exactly. Means, the answer is there is a point zero somewhere in between, right? So when you say t is equal to 1 by x okay and you can see that your limits of integration go from minus 2 to 2 that means there is a point where x becomes zero right okay there your t will become undefined that means the function will suffer discontinuity at a point between minus 2 to 2 if you follow this substitution correct if such in such a case we cannot use this substitution getting the point so a very important learning from here is that whenever we are using a substitution make sure that nowhere between that interval of x the newly substituted variable becomes discontinuous getting the point so if you solve it directly minus 2 to 2 dx by uh, x square plus 2 square your answer is going to be half tan inverse x by 2 okay if you put your limits of integration this is how we put the limits of integration when you put a 2 it becomes half tan inverse 1 is pi by 4 minus of minus pi by 4 okay so i think this gives you uh, pi by 4 itself as the answer right but the moment you put x is equal to 1 by t dx is equal to minus 1 by t square dt okay what will happen limit of integration of course will also change minus half to half okay this will become minus 1 by t square dt 4 plus 1 by t square okay which is nothing but minus dt by t square plus 4 minus half to half okay so this gives you the answer as half tan inverse of t by 2 okay yes or no so it's 4t square plus 1 oh sorry 4t square plus This is two t. Sir, so it's two tan inverse two t. And it's a minus also. Ah, uh, what happened? Sir, ah, uh, uh, nothing, sir. Okay. So when you, when you put a half, it becomes a minus pi by four. Correct. And again, when you put a minus half, it again becomes a minus of so half. So it becomes plus pi by four. I'm sorry. Minus of minus pi by four, so it becomes minus pi by four. That means the answer becomes negative, which is impossible. Why? It is impossible because we know that this function is a positive function. Correct? One by one by four plus x square is always a positive function. That means it's always about the x-axis. So how can the area under that become negative? Okay. Now this discrepancy has arisen because of a faulty substitution over here 
because my function becomes discontinuous at some point between minus 2 and 2 which is at zero point so hence please be careful when you are using substitutions to solve the questions in definite integrals by the way just to clear that myth if substitution changes that doesn't mean your answer is going to definitely change in fact substitution will change uh, the limits of integration will change every time you substitute x with a new variable okay so in definite integral we have to change the limits of integration according to the new substitution okay let's take another question hope you can read the question properly find the value of integral of 0 to e to the power x square plus 2x minus 1 by 2 by x plus 1 plus integral from 1 to e x ln x e to the power x square minus 2 by 2 just 2 minutes to answer this just type in your response or you can also speak it out okay any idea anyone so oh, one second one second okay time up so what i'll do here is i will not disturb the second integral okay let the second integral be integral from 1 to e x log x e to the power x square minus 2 by 2 okay while in the first integral what i'll do is i will substitute plus 1 st x plus 1 st correct so dx will be equal to dt okay limit of integration will change from 1 to e hope everybody knows how to change the limit of integration it's very simple when you put x as 0 t becomes 1 so lower limit will become 1 when you substitute x as e minus 1 t will become e so upper limit will become e okay so e to the power this term here is nothing but x plus 1 the whole square this is x plus 1 the whole square minus 2 correct so it's t square minus 2 by t okay dt is that fine now so divided by 2 yeah now if you see the limits of integration for both of them has become the same okay and let me tell you in a definite integral it doesn't matter the name of the variable okay so you can call again t as x now this is very surprising that you can i am again calling t as x because there is actually nothing in the name ultimately you have to integrate that function and put the limits of integration that's why the name of the variable at any instant can be changed to anything you want okay so instead of this t here i will put everywhere x doesn't matter so what i'm going to do is i'm going to just change them to x again so wherever there was a t i put x okay so but this shouldn't be fair right i mean it's not, because in the in the beginning of substituting something as x Function of x is t. But this is giving out a value. See, uh, Shijan, what is happening is treat this as a new problem itself. Don't have any history to it. Okay. Once you have made the substitution, you have changed the limits. Treat it as the beginning of the problem. See, if you want, you can keep on keeping different different names, but it's just going to make your uh, problem more complicated. I'm just using the same name just in order to bring it back to the same old function. Okay. Ultimately, you yeah. are going to put the limits of integration, so the variable name should not matter at all. Getting my point? So, when you are talking about conversion of t back to x, think as if there was no previous relationship between t and x. Start with a new problem per se. Okay. So this becomes the same function. Okay, so you can combine these two functions and write it as single function. So e to the power x square minus two by two, one by x plus x log x. Okay, integration from one to e. Now, how do you evaluate this? How do you evaluate this? If you look at this very carefully, you would realize that this is the exact differential of log x into e to the power x square minus 2 by 2 okay if you differentiate this you would realize you will end up getting the integrand over here try it out if you keep this as uh, uh, intact and differentiate log x you get 1 by x 
if you keep log x and this uh, derivative differentiate this you will get log x e to the power x square minus 2 by 2 into 2x by 2 which is actually x okay so this is an exact differential over here so the answer for this will be just log x into e to the power x square minus 2 by 2 you just have to put the limits of integration now so when you put an e you get 1 e to the power e square minus 2 by 2 okay and when you put a 1 you become it becomes a 0 and this is as good as saying root e to the power of e square minus 2 i think such an option is present in option number d is this clear so one thing that we learned over here something which was surprising that there is nothing in the name of the variable being used so if you say integration of f of x from a to b or integration of f of t dt from a to b integration of f of z dz from a to b they are all the same that is nothing but capital f of b minus capital f of a so in the primitive of the function you have to substitute upper limit and substitute lower limit and take the difference let's take another question Find the value of integral of big pi x plus r, that is the product of x plus r, r from 1 to n, times summation of 1 by x plus k, k from 1 to n. And this product you are integrating from 0 to 1. Two minutes to solve this again. In fact, two minutes is also a big time for this. Should solve it within one minute. I think Omkar needs to uh, mute his mic. Done? Yes, sir. Okay. D. Fine. Okay. So let's discuss this. See here, when you look at this symbol, big pi of x plus r times summation of 1 by x plus k. Okay. If you expand it, it will be nothing but x plus 1, x plus 2, x plus 3, da 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 da, till you reach x plus n, times 1 by x plus 1, 1 by x plus 2, till you reach 1 by x plus n. Okay. I don't know how many of you are able to recognize that this is actually the derivative of x plus 1 x plus 2 all the way till x plus n how many of you are able to identify this remember when you're differentiating this that means you're using product rule you differentiate one at a time correct so let's say you differentiate the first term and keep others as such that means you're going to get the same product with the first term so x plus 1 will automatically get cancelled off and hence x plus 1 will automatically disappear right so when you differentiate it, you just first differentiate the first term, keep others as such, correct? Okay. Then you keep the first, differentiate the second, which is again one, and then keep the others as such. Okay. And keep on doing so. And the last term would be x plus one, x plus two, all the way till x plus n minus one. Correct. Now, if you take x plus one, x plus 2 etc common from all of them the first term is just going to be 1 by x plus 1 second term is just going to be 1 by x plus 2 etc till 1 by x plus n okay so this entire expression is just the integral of a exact differential correct okay so this dx integration you are doing from 0 to 1 okay so basically you are integrating d of something 
So answer is that something itself. So this is going to be your answer. And you just have to put the upper and the lower limit in that. So when you put a one, you get a uh, two plus three all the way till n plus one, which is n plus one factorial. And when you put a zero, you get a n factorial. So this, okay. If you take n factorial as common, it will be n plus one minus one. That's nothing but n into n factorial and absolutely correct. Shijan, answer is D. Clear? Everyone?